with hands that shook and a heart that felt like it was being torn apart, Yemisi gently placed her baby into one of the baskets. Her tears fell onto the soft clothes and she whispered, Mama loves you. Mama loves you so much. Ademi took a deep breath trying to steady himself. He bent down and placed their baby girl into the second basket. His hands lingered for a moment, his body shaking with grief. Forgive me, my child, he whispered. Forgive your father. Once upon a time, in a beautiful and peaceful kingdom called Egbe, there lived a man named Adeyemi and his beloved wife, Yemisi. Egbe was a land blessed with tall green trees that swayed gently in the breeze and rivers that sparkled under the warm sun. Birds chirped happily every morning and the villagers lived in harmony, sharing smiles and kind words. Adeyemi was a kind and just man, known by everyone in the village for his gentle heart and his willingness to help anyone in need. He was a skilled craftsman who made the most beautiful items out of wood. Adeyemi could carve anything, cheers, that we are strong and smooth, tables that we are sturdy and perfect for family meals, and tiny wooden animals that children loved to play with. He even made grand wooden doors with patterns of flowers and vines, which made people's houses look special. Every morning, Adeyemi would walk to his small workshop at the edge of the village. The workshop was simple with shelves lined with tools and wood of all shapes and sizes. Sunlight would pour in through the window, making everything glow. Adeyemi loved the smell of fresh wood and the way his hands felt as he shaped the pieces. He would whistle as he walked, happy to be doing something he loved. One day, a young boy named Toby wandered into Adeyemi's workshop. His eyes widened as he watched Adeyemi carefully carve a lion from a block of wood. Wow! Uncle Adeyemi, Toby exclaimed, clapping his small hands together. That lion looks real. Adeyemi smiled and wiped sweat from his forehead. Ah, Toby, do you like it? He asked in a gentle voice. Come closer and see. Toby ran over and Adeyemi handed him the wooden lion. It's yours, Adeyemi said, chuckling at the boy's joy. Thank you, Uncle Adeyemi, Toby said, beaming with happiness. He ran off to show his friends and Adeyemi felt warm inside, knowing he had made a child happy. While Adeyemi worked hard as a craftsman, his wife, Yemisi, had a different job that she loved very much. Yemisi was a teacher at the local village school, and everyone agreed that she was the best teacher in the whole kingdom of Egbe. Yemisi had a bright smile that made everyone feel safe and loved. Her classroom was always full of laughter and learning. Yemisi had a special way of teaching. She used stories and songs to explain lessons, making sure the children understood. When teaching numbers, she would sing, one, two, buckle my shoe, three, four, knock on the door, and the children would giggle and join in. When teaching letters, she would say, A is for apple, B is for ball while drawing funny pictures on the blackboard. The children adored her, and they never wanted to miss a day at school. One sunny afternoon, Yemisi was teaching her students about animals. Who can tell me the name of an animal that is big and grey and has a long trunk? She asked with a playful grin. Elephant, 
The children shouted together, their eyes sparkling with excitement. Yemisi laughed and nodded. Yes, an elephant. Very good. She walked around the classroom, looking at each child. Can anyone tell me how an elephant uses its trunk? She asked. A little girl named Amina raised her hand, bouncing in her seat. It uses its trunk to drink water and pick up food, she said with a big smile. Excellent, Amina. Yemisi praised, clapping her hands. You are so smart. The children laughed and clapped too, happy to learn in such a fun way. After school, Yemisi would walk home through the village, waving to the people she knew. Good afternoon, Yemisi. An old woman selling fruits would call out. Good afternoon, Mama. Yemisi would reply, stopping to chat for a moment. Your oranges look so fresh today. Take some, the old woman would say, handing Yemisi a few juicy oranges. Yemisi would thank her and continue home, thinking about how kind and caring the people in Egbe were. Adeyemi and Yemisi lived in a simple but cozy hut. The hut had walls made of strong mud, a roof thatched with dry palm leaves, and windows that let in the cool evening breeze. It was not a big house, but it was full of love and warmth. Yemisi always kept the hut clean and decorated it with flowers she picked from the fields. At night, Adeyemi would light a small lamp and they would sit together, talking about your day. One evening, Adeyemi and Yemisi were sitting outside their hut, watching the stars twinkle in the sky. Yemisi, Adeyemi said softly, Do you know how lucky I am to have you as my wife? Yemisi laughed and playfully nudged him. And do you know how lucky I am to have you as my husband? She teased. They both laughed, their laughter blending with the sounds of crickets chirping and leaves rustling in the breeze. Adeyemi's mother, Mama Ade, was a kind and loving woman who lived nearby. She loved Yemisi as if she were her own daughter. Mama Ade would visit often, carrying baskets of fresh fruit and foodstuffs. One morning, she came by, her face glowing with happiness. Ah, my dear children, she called out as she entered the hut. Mama, Yemisi greeted, running to hug her. Welcome, Mama, come and sit down. Adeyemi stood up and took the heavy basket from his mother's hands. Mama, you always bring so much for us, he said, shaking his head with a smile. You should let me carry things for you sometimes. Mama Ade laughed. Her voice full of warmth. Ah, Adeyemi, you know I am strong. She sat down and looked at Yemisi. Yemisi, my dear, how are you? I am fine, Mama. Yemisi replied, smiling. How are you too, Mama? <laughs> my child, I am well. Mama Ade said, patting Yemisi's hand. But you both know what I am waiting for, eh? She raised her eyebrows and gave a playful smile. When will you give me a grandchild? Adeyemi and Yemisi looked at each other and laughed. Mama, be patient. Adeyemi said, chuckling. Everything will happen at the right time. Patience? Mama Ade said, pretending to be shocked. Do you know how long I have been patient? She shook her head with a sigh. I am getting old. Oh, I want to hold my grandchildren to rock him or her to sleep and sing sweet songs. Yemisi laughed and hugged Mama Ade. Don't worry, Mama, she said. Your grandchild will come soon and you will be the best grandmother in the whole kingdom. Mama Ade's eyes softened and she kissed Yemisi's cheek. My sweet daughter, she said, her voice full of love. I cannot wait for until then. Let us enjoy this wonderful day together. They spent the afternoon talking, laughing, and sharing stories. 
Mama they told funny tales from her youth, making her day me and ye me see laugh until their sides hurt. And that is how your father tried to impress me, but ended up falling into the river. She said, wiping tears of laughter from her eyes. Oh, Mama, Adeyemi said, holding his stomach. That story never gets old. As the sun began to set, Mama Ade got ready to leave. Take care of each other, my dear children, she said, hugging them both. And remember, I am always here for you. Thank you, Mama, Yemisi said, waving as Mama Ade walked away. Her basket now empty. We love you. And I love you both too. Mama, they called back. Her voice echoing through the village. Life in the village of Egbe was beautiful and calm. The people were kind. The land was full of life. And Adeemi and Yemisi were happy. Surrounded by love and laughter. Even though they dreamed of having children one day. They knew that happiness came from being grateful for the life they already had. They believed that with love, kindness, and patience, their dreams would one day come true. Years passed in the peaceful kingdom of Egbe, and the once joyful laughter that Adeyemi and Yemisi had dreamed would fill their small cozy hut still had not come. It had been more than 10 long years since they started praying and hoping for a child. Each year, their hope grew dimmer, but Adeemi and Yemisi never stopped holding on to each other. Adeemi, though had broken at times, remained strong. Every morning, he whispered words of comfort to Yemisi, reminding her, God's time is the best. He kept his faith alive, even when it was hard, and he did his best to be a pillar of strength for his beloved wife. Yemisi, however, found it harder to smile. Every day, she saw mothers carrying their babies, and each time, her heart ached a little more. One sunny afternoon, Yemisi had just finished teaching at the village school. The children, as always, had been a joy to be with, filling her day with laughter and little surprises. They had sung songs clapped their hands, and even made drawings of animals and flowers. But as the last child left with a cheerful wave, Yemisi was left with her own heavy thoughts. She packed her books, tied her scarf tighter around her head, and began the walk home. The village path was quiet, lined with tall grasses that swayed gently in the breeze. The sun was high, and it made everything around her shimmer with golden light. Birds chirped in the distance and the scent of flowers filled the air. Yemisi sighed as she walked, her sandals kicking up small clouds of dust. She thought about how hard she and Adeyemi had tried. They had visited the herbalist, prayed at the village shrine, and even fasted for days. Yet, no child had come to them. Her heart felt heavy and tears pricked the corners of her eyes. Suddenly, she noticed an old man sitting under a large tree by the side of the path. His hair was white like fresh cotton, and his beard flowed down to his chest. He wore simple, worn clothes, and his eyes sparkled with a warmth that made Yemisi feel both comforted and curious. He smiled at her, and Yemisi, ever polite and kind, stopped and greeted him. Good afternoon, Baba, she said, her voice soft and respectful. Good afternoon, Yemisi, the old man replied, his voice gentle but strong. He looked at her with a knowing expression, as though he could see right into her heart. Yemisi's eyes widened. How did he know her name? She had never seen this man before. Baba, how do you know me? She asked, surprised. The old man chuckled. A sound like the rustling of leaves. My child, 
He said, I know many things. I know your heart is heavy. And I know your prayers have gone unanswered for many years. But do not worry, Yemisi. Very soon, you will carry your bundle of joys. Yemisi's mouth dropped open in shock. Her heart began to race. And she felt a mixture of hope and confusion. Really, Baba? She asked her voice trembling. Are you sure? Will I have a child? The old man nodded, his eyes serious. Yes, Yemisi, but listen carefully. He said, your joy will come, but it will not come without trouble. You must be strong and do everything within your power to protect the gift you will receive. Yemisi frowned, her brow furrowing. Trouble? What kind of trouble, Baba? She asked, stepping closer. Please, I don't understand. What must I do? But before she could say more, the old man was gone. Yemisi blinked, looking around in confusion. The spot where he had been sitting was empty, and there was no sign of him anywhere. The leaves on the tree rustled subtly, and the path was silent once more. Baba, Yemisi called out, her voice shaky. Where did you go? She spun around, her heart pounding in her chest. She tried to listen for footsteps or a sign of the old man, but there was nothing. Suddenly, she felt a gentle tap on her shoulder. Yemisi gasped and turned quickly, clutching her books to her chest. But instead of the old man, she found herself sitting up in her own bed, her heart still racing. It was just a dream, a strange, vivid dream. She looked around the small hut, trying to calm her breathing. The sunlight streamed in through the small window, and everything looked normal. Ademi was sitting beside her, his eyes full of worry. Hear me see. He said softly, touching her hand. Are you all right? You are moving and whispering in your sleep. Yemisi took a deep breath, feeling the warmth of his touch. She nodded slowly. Yes, I'm okay, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. It was just a dream. Adeyemi tilted his head, concern still etched on his face. A dream? He asked gently. Was it a bad one? Yemisi hesitated. The words of the old man still echoing in her mind. No, not bad, she said quietly. Just um, strange. Ademi sat closer and wrapped his arm around her shoulders. Tell me about it, he encouraged. Sometimes sharing a dream can make the fear go away. Yemisi leaned against him, feeling the steady beat of his chest. It always calmed her. I was walking home from school, she began, and I met an old man under a tree. He knew my name, and he told me not to worry, that we would soon have a bundle of joys. Ademi's eyes softened, and a small smile appeared on his lips. That sounds like a wonderful dream, he said, his voice full of hope. But there is more, Yemisi added, her voice trembling. He said... He said our joy would come with trouble, and he warned me to protect our gifts. Ademi's smile faded, and he frowned slightly. Trouble? He repeated, his tone more serious. What kind of trouble? Yemisi shook her head, tears welling up in her eyes. I don't know, she whispered. I asked him to explain, but before he could, he disappeared, and then I woke up. Ademi held her tighter, gently brushing a tear from her cheek. Dreams can be strange, he said, trying to reassure her. Maybe it was just your mind playing tricks on you. Yemisi looked into his eyes, searching for comfort. Maybe, she agreed softly, but deep down, she couldn't shake the feeling that the dream was more than just her imagination. Ademi kissed her forehead. Whatever happens, 
we'll face it together. He promised. God's time is still the best and we must keep believing. Yemisi nodded, grateful for his strength. Thank you, Adeyemi. She said, her voice stayed here. I'm so lucky to have you. And I am lucky to have you too. Adeyemi replied, a gentle smile returning to his face. Now, let's get ready for the day. We have much to do and I want to see that beautiful smile of yours. Yemisi managed a small smile, feeling a bit lighter. All right, she agreed, wiping her tears. Together, they got up and began their day, each trying to hold on to hopes and love, even in the face of unanswered prayers. But as the day went on, Yemisi couldn't help but wonder about the old man in her dream. Was it truly really just a dream or was it a warning? She tried to shake the feeling off, but it stayed with her, a whisper in the back of her mind. Even as she taught her students that day, leading them in songs and lessons, the old man's words echoed in her heart. She knew she had to be strong, but she also knew that something was about to change. A few weeks after Yemisi's strange encounter with the old man, something wonderful happened. Yemisi woke up one morning feeling a little different. Her heart was full of a throttling hope she couldn't explain. And she had been feeling more tired than usual that afternoon. As she was sweeping the floor of their small cozy hut, she suddenly felt a wave of dizziness. She leaned against the wall and placed her hand on her belly. Yemisi's eyes widened and a slow smile spread across her face. Could it be? She whispered, her voice full of wonder. Her heart began to race with excitement. Carefully, she set the broom aside and hurried outside, waiting for her husband to return from his workshop. When she saw Adeyemi walking up the path, carrying a wooden stool he had just finished carving, Yemisi could barely contain herself. Adeyemi, she called out. Her voice high with happiness. Adeyemi looked up, surprised at the joy in her voice. He quickly set the stool down and rushed over to her. Hear me see my love, he said, worry flickering across his face. Are you all right? Hear me see laughed, her eyes shining with tears of joy. Ade, I have a wonderful news. She reached for his hand and placed them on her belly. Adeyemi stared at her, his eyes wide. What is it? He asked, holding his breath. Yemisi's smile grew even brighter. I'm pregnant, Ade, she exclaimed. We are going to have a baby. For a moment, Adeyemi just stood there, as if the words hadn't fully reached his mind. Then, slowly, a huge smile spread across his face. A baby. He repeated, his voice full of disbelief and happiness. Are you sure? Yemisi nodded, tears streaming down her cheeks. Yes, I'm sure, she said. Our prayers have finally been answered. Adeyemi's laughter rang out, strong and joyful. He put Yemisi into a tight hug, lifting her off her feet and spinning her around. Oh, Yemisi, God is good. God is so good, he shouted, his voice filled with gratitude. They held onto each other, their hearts full of happiness and love. Later that day, Mama Ade came to visit, carrying a basket of fresh fruit as she always did. Her eyes crinkled with a warm smile as she entered the hut. My dear children, she called out, I have brought you some sweet oranges and ripe bananas. Yemisi and Adeyemi rushed to meet her. Mama, sit down, Adeyemi said, taking the heavy basket from her hands. We have something to tell you. Mama Ade looked at them both, her eyes twinkling with curiosity. Ah, what is it? She asked, settling onto a wooden stool. You both look so happy today. Tell me, what news do you have? 
Yemisi and Adeyemi exchanged a joyful glance, and Yemisi took a deep breath. Mama, she began, her voice trembling with excitement. I am pregnant. You are going to be a grandmother. For a moment, Mama Ade just stared at them, her mouth open in surprise. Then her eyes filled with tears, and she let out a joyful cry. Praise be to God, she exclaimed, clapping her hands. Oh, my dear children, I have waited so long for this day. God has heard our prayers. She put Yemisi into a warm embrace, her laughter bubbling over. Yemisi, my sweet daughter, she said, wiping away tears of happiness. You have made this old woman the happiest mother in the world. Adeyemi's eyes shone with love as he watched his mother and wife share the happy moment. Mama, he said, his voice thick with emotion. We couldn't wait to tell you. We are so blessed. Mama Ade placed her hands on Yemisi's belly and closed her eyes. May this child be strong and healthy, she prayed. May this child bring joy and peace to our family. The news spread quickly through the village of Egbe, and soon everyone was talking about it. The villagers rejoiced with Adeyemi and Yemisi, coming by to share their happiness and offer their blessings. Women from the village came to visit Yemisi, bringing gifts and advice for the journey of motherhood. One morning, a kind woman named Mama Kemi arrived, carrying a bundle of soft clothes. Yemi, see my dear, she said, smiling warmly. I have brought you some clothes for the baby. They are soft and warm, perfect for wrapping your little one. Yemi's eyes filled with tears as she accepted the gift. Thank you, Mama Kemi, she said, her voice full of gratitude. You are so kind. Mama Kemi patted Yemi's hand. It is a blessing to share in your joy, she said. We are all so happy for you. Other women taught Yemisi what she needed to know about caring for a baby. They told her how to swaddle a newborn, how to make special herbal baths, and how to sing lullabies that would suit a crying child. Yemisi listened to their words, her heart full of excitement and love. Meanwhile, the men of the village also celebrated with Adeyemi. They brought him gifts, from carved wooden cradles to tools for making more baby furniture. One afternoon, Adeyemi's friend Jide came by with a large, beautifully carved rocking chair. Ade, my friend, Jide said with a wide grin, I made this chair for you and your wife. You can use it to rock your baby to sleep. Adeyemi's eyes shone with appreciation. Jide, this is beautiful he said, running his hand over the smooth wood. Thank you so much, my brother. Jide clapped him on the back. It's nothing, he said laughing. We are all excited to meet this special child. You and Yemisi deserve all the happiness in the world. Mama Ade, of course, could not contain her excitement. She came by often, bringing baskets full of baby clothes, tiny shoes and soft blankets. Look at this. She said one day, holding up a small knitted hat. I made this myself. It will keep the baby's head warm on chilly mornings. Yemisi's eyes filled with tears of gratitude. Mama, she said, hugging her. The baby is already so loved. Thank you for everything. Mama, they beamed, her face full of joy. I cannot wait to hold my grandchild, she said, her voice full of emotion. God is good, and this baby will be a blessing to us all. As time went by, Yemisi's belly grew bigger, and she felt the baby move and kick. Every evening, she and Adeyemi would sit outside their hut, talking about their dreams for the future. Ade, Yemisi said one night, placing his hand on her belly, feel that the baby is kicking again. Adeyemi's eyes lit up with wonder. He pressed his head gently against her belly and laughed, 
when he felt the tiny movement. Our little one is strong, he said, his voice full of pride. I cannot wait to meet our baby. Yemisin laughed too, her heart full of joy. What do you think the baby would look like? She asked, her eyes sparkling. Do you think it will have your smile on my eyes? Ademi smiled and shook his head. I don't know, he said, but I am sure the baby would be as beautiful as his mother. They laughed and dreamed together, and the love they shared only grew stronger. But deep down, Yemisi couldn't still shake the memory of the old man's warning. His words stayed with her, like a shadow she couldn't quite see. Your joy will come, but it will not come without trouble. She wondered what kind of trouble he had meant, and she worried silently, never sharing her fear with anyone. Still, Yemisi tried to focus on the happiness around her. The villagers, Mama Ade and Adeyemi, all showered her with love and support. She reminded herself to be grateful for each moment, even though a part of her heart remained uneasy. Whatever the future held, she knew she would have to be strong, not just for herself, but for the child growing inside her. Months passed. And Yemisi's belly grew larger with each day. The villagers continued to visit, bringing gifts and sharing advice, all eagerly awaiting the arrival of the baby that had brought so much hope to their little community. Yemisi and Adeyemi were filled with anticipation, their hearts full of love and excitement. Finally, the day everyone had been waiting for arrived. It was a bright Monday morning, and Yemisi was determined to go to the village school one last time before giving birth. I just want to see my pupils, she said to Adeyemi, who was helping her get ready. Adeyemi frowned with worry. Yemisi, are you sure you should be going to school today? He asked, concerned, feeling his voice. You are so close to giving birth. Yemisi smiled, though she was tired and heavy with the baby. I'll be fine, my love, she said gently, patting his hand. The children make me happy, and I want to see their little faces. Adeyemi sighed, but he couldn't help but smile at her determination. All right, my love, he said, giving her a gentle kiss on the forehead. Be careful, okay? Yemisi held her belly as she made her way towards the school. The sun was shining, and parents and children were heading in the same direction. The air was filled with sounds of laughter and chatter. Yemisi walked slowly, her steps careful, but her heart was light as she thought about seeing her student. But as she was walking, she suddenly felt a sharp, terrible pain in her belly. She stopped, her breath catching, and then she screamed clutching her belly. The pain was so strong that she felt her knees buckle. Yemi see, one of the women nearby called, rushing to her side. What is wrong? Yemi's face was pale and sweat beaded on her forehead. The baby, it's coming, she managed to say, her voice trembling with pain. More women gathered around her, their faces filled with worry. We must get her to the midwife, one of them said. Together, they helped Yemisi, guiding her carefully towards the hut of the village midwife. Yemisi clutched their hands, tears streaming down her face as the pain came in waves. Inside the midwife's hut, the midwife, an older woman named Mama Neka, sprang into action. Lay her down gently, she instructed, her voice calm but firm. The women helped Yemisi onto the soft mat, and Mama Neka began preparing for the delivery. Everything will be all right, Yemisi, Mama Neka said. Her hands steady. You are strong, and your baby will be here soon. Meanwhile, one of the women ran as fast as she could to Adeyemi's workshop. Adeyemi was working on a beautiful wooden crib when he heard the women calling his name. He looked up, his heart pounding. Ade, 
She shouted breathless. Yemisi is in labor. She's with the midwife now. Adeyemi dropped his tool and ran, his heart racing with a mix of fear and excitement. He sprinted to the midwife's hut, barely noticing the people who called out to him as he passed. When he arrived, he found a small crowd of villagers gathered outside, their faces anxious. He pushed through the crowd and stopped in front of the hut. Is Yemisi all right? He asked. His voice shaking. One of the women placed a comforting hand on his arm. The midwife is with her. She says softly, be strong, Ade. Not long after, Mama Ade was told the news. She dropped everything she was doing and hurried to the hut. Her heart pounding. My daughter, she whispered, tears filling her eyes as she made her way through the crowd. Please, let her and the baby be safe. Inside the hut, Yemisi was in great pain. But she held on, her heart full of hope. Mama Neka walked skillfully, her hands moving with care. Hours passed and it felt like an eternity for everyone waiting outside. The air was thick with tension and worry and whispers filled the crowd as they prayed for Yemisi's safe delivery. Finally, a loud clear cry broke the silence. Then another. The cries of two babies rang out strong and full of life the midwife came out but instead of looking happy her face was filled with sadness and worry Ademi rushed forward his heart thumping in his chest mama neka he said urgently is yemisi all right is my wife safe the midwife nodded her eyes softening a little yes she's safe she said your wife is strong and brave. Mama Ade stepped forward, her voice trembling. And the baby, she said, is the baby healthy? The midwife took a deep breath, her hands trembling. Not just one baby, she said softly. Yemisi has given birth to twins, a boy and a girl. Gasps of shock rippled through the crowd. And Ademi felt his heart drop. Twins? He looked at the midwife. His face pale. In the kingdom of Egbe, twins were considered a terrible cause, a taboo. The villagers believed that twins would bring calamity upon their land unless they were getting rid of immediately. Adeyemi's voice broke as he asked, What will happen now? The midwife's eyes filled with sorrow. The elders must be informed. She said, the tradition, it cannot be ignored. Tears filled Mama Ade's eyes and she clutched her chest. No, no, she whispered. These are the children we have prayed for. How can this be? The crowd murmured with fear and disbelief. The news of Yemis's twins spread like wildfire and soon the elders and the village chief priest, the spiritual leader, arrived. There were some bad expressions, and their eyes were hard as they stepped forward. The chief priest spoke first, his voice heavy with authority. Adeyemi, he said, your wife has given birth to twins. You know our tradition. Twins are a curse upon our land. They must be thrown into the river to save us from calamity. Adeyemi's news felt weak and his heart shattered. He rushed into the hut, his breath coming in raised gaps. Yemisi was lying on the mat, tears streaming down her face. She held their newborn twins in her arms, their small cries filling the air. The boy and the girl were perfect, tiny and beautiful, with little hands that reached out to the world. A day, Yemisi sobbed, looking up at her husband, what we will do? They want to take care of babies away. Adeyemi fell to his knees beside her, his hands trembling. He hugged Yemisi tightly, his own tears falling. We'll find a way, my love. He whispered, though his voice shook with fear. We will protect them. Namade entered the hut, her face pale with grief. She knelt beside them, 
hands reaching for the babies. My grandchildren, she whispered, her voice breaking. How can this be? We have waited so long for you. The chief priest and the elders stepped into the hut, their presence casting a heavy shadow. The chief priest's voice was cold and unyielding. You have 24 hours, he declared. The twins must be thrown into the river to avert the course. Yemisi, you must be the one to do it. Yemisi's body shook with sobs, and she clutched her babies closer. No, she whispered, heartbreaking. Please, no. They are my children. Ademi stood up, his fist clenched. Please, he begged, his voice raw with desperation. Is there no other way? These are innocent children. They cannot be a cause. The chief priest's eyes were hard. Tradition must be followed, he said, or the entire village will suffer. The elders left, their decision final, and the heart fell silent except for the cries of the newborn twins and the quiet sobs of their parents. Adeyemi and Yemisi held each other, their hearts heavy with grief and fear. Mama, they sat beside them, tears streaming down her face, whispering prayers for a miracle. That night, their heart was filled with sorrow. Adeyemi and Yemis sat with their babies, their hearts breaking at the thought of losing them. Yemisi held the twins close, kissing their soft cheeks and whispering words of love. You are my joy, she said, her voice shaking, my precious gift. How can I let you go? Adeyemi knelt beside her, his face wet with tears. We cannot fight tradition. He said, his voice full of anguish. Oh, we'll pray. We'll pray for a miracle. Mama Ade placed her hands on their shoulders. Her heart heavy with sorrow. God is watching, she said softly. We must believe that he will not abandon us. The small family stayed together through the long painful night, holding on to hope, even as fear gripped their hearts. They prayed, wept, and held their babies close, hoping that somehow, some way, they will be spared from the cruel feet that awaited them. The next morning, Yemisi woke up before the first light of dawn. The air was still cool and filled with the quiet whispers of the village waking up. Her heart was heavy with worry, but her determination was strong. She knew she couldn't let her babies be taken away. Quietly, quietly, she kissed her sleeping twins who lay bundled up next to her and whispered, Mama will do everything to protect you. Yemisi slipped out of the small hut, careful not to wake Adeyemi or Mama Adi. Her feet carried her quickly through the village paths, which were still shrouded in mist. She made her way to the home of her friend, a fellow teacher, Selina. Selina had come to the village of Egbe from a faraway land, a place full of modern ways and ideas that the villagers sometimes found strange. But Selina had a kind heart, and Yemisi had always trusted her. When Yemisi reached Selina's small hut, she knocked on the wooden door, her hands trembling. Inside, Selina was just waking up. She had to knock and hurry to the door, tying her headscarf as she went. She opened the door to see Yemisi standing there, her eyes red from crying and her face pale with worry. Yemisi, Selina said, her voice full of concern. What's wrong? Are you all right? Yemisi stepped inside. Her tears spilling over as she clutched Selina's hands. Selina, she said, her voice breaking. I need your help. Please, my babies, my twins, they are in danger. Selina's eyes widened in shock. Twins? She repeated. Her voice soft with surprise. You had twins? Yemisi nodded. Her tears falling freely. Yes, a boy and a girl, she said. But in our village, twins are seen as a cause. The elders have demanded that we get rid of them by throwing them into the river. Selena's mouth fell open and she placed a hand over her heart. That's horrible, she said, her voice filled with disbelief. How can they think such innocent children are caused? Yemisi fell to her knees, clutching Selena's hands tighter. Please, Selena, she begged. You come from a place where 
These beliefs don't exist. I know you have friends from other villages who might be able to help. I can't let my babies die. Please help me. Selena's eyes filled with tears as she knelt beside Yemisi. Of course, I will help you, she said, her voice strong and full of resolve. I will call on my friends. We'll find a way to save your children. Yemisi's heart swelled with hope and she hugged Selena tightly. Thank you, she whispered. Thank you so much. Selena pulled back and wiped her own tears. Go home and stay with your family, she said. I will do everything I can. Trust me, Yemisi. Yemisi nodded, her heart feeling a small flicker of hope. She stood up, wiped her tears and hurried back home, her mind racing with the promise of a possible solution. When she returned to the hut, Ademi was pacing back and forth. Worry etched on his face. He turned when he heard the door open and rushed to her side. Yemisi, he said, his voice thick with relief. Where have you been? You left so early and I was worried. Yemisi took a deep breath, trying to steady her voice. I went to search for a solution, she said quietly. I couldn't just sit here and do nothing. Ademi's eyes filled with confusion and pain. A solution? He asked. What kind of solution could there be? We have no choice but to follow tradition. If we don't get rid of the twins, they say our land will be caused and our people will suffer. Nemesis' eyes flashed with anger and she took a step closer to him. Do you really believe that? She demanded. Do you think our innocent babies are caused? Look at them, Adeyemi. They are so small, so pure. How can they bring harm to anyone? And then his shoulders slumped and he covered his face with his hands. I don't know what to believe, he whispered. His voice is breaking. I love them, Yemisi, but I also love our people. How can we choose between our children and our land? Yemisi's hands clenched into fist and she shook her head fiercely. I will not let them take our children, she said, her voice trembling with determination. I will do anything anything to protect them. Ademi looked at her, his eyes full of sorrow and helplessness. What can we do? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. We are just two people against an entire tradition. Before Yemisi could respond, Mama Ade, who had been sitting in the corner holding the twins and rocking them gently, began to cry. Tears shamed down her face as she looked at her grandchildren. Oh, my sweet babies, she wept. How can we lose you after waiting so long for you to come into our lives? Yemisi went to her, her heart aching at the sight of Mama Ade's pain. She knelt beside her and placed a gentle hand on her shoulder. Mama, she said softly, don't cry. The twins will be fine. I promise you, I'll find a way. Mama Ade looked up, her eyes full of tears and hope. What do you mean, Yemisi? She asked, her voice trembling. How can they be fine? What can you do? Yemisi took a deep breath and wiped her own tears. I cannot tell you everything yet, she said, her voice steady. But I have spoken to someone who is willing to help. We have to believe that there is hope. Mamade clutched the twins closer, her hands trembling. I will pray, she whispered. I will pray for a miracle. God, please, save these innocent children. Yemisi stood up, her heart pounding. She knew that time was running out. The elders had given them only 24 hours, and every second felt like sand slipping through her fingers. But she couldn't give up, not when her baby's lives were at stake. She looked at Adeyemi, who was sitting on the edge of the bed, his head in his hands. Ade. She says softly, I know you are scared. I'm scared too. But we have to be strong for our children. We cannot let fear control us. Adeyemi lifted his head, his eyes full of tears. I don't want to lose them, he said. His voice is breaking. But I don't know how to fight against our entire village. Yemisi stepped forward and took his hands in his. We'll fight with love, she said. Her voice full of determination. And we will trust that there is a way.
we have two Ade. Ade looked into her eyes and saw the fire of a mother who would do anything to protect her children. He nodded slowly, though his heart was still heavy with fear. All right, my love, he whispered. I'll stand by you no matter what happens. They held each other tightly, drawing strength from each other's love. As the sun rose higher in the sky, their small family huddled together, holding on to the hope that Selina would be able to help. Mama, they continued to rock the twins, whispering prayers through her tears. The day ahead would be long and full of uncertainty, but Yemisi refused to give up. Her love for her children was stronger than any tradition, and she would do everything in her power to protect them, even if it meant facing the unknown. At noon, the air in the village of Egbe was heavy with sorrow. A hush had fallen over the community as the village chief priest and the elders made their way to Yemisi and Ade Yemi's hut. The chief priest, a tall, stern man dressed in flowing white robes, held a long staff adorned with feathers and beads. The elders followed behind him, their faces grave and serious. When they reached the doorstep of Yemisi and Ade Yemi's small home, the chief priest stepped forward. His voice was deep and solemn. We have come for the children, he announced. His eyes hard and unyielding. Two of the elders stepped forward, carrying empty woven baskets. They placed the basket on the ground with a heavy thud, and silence filled the air. Inside the hut, Yemisi's heart shattered into a thousand pieces. Tears streamed down her face as she held her twins close. The babies, wrapped snugly in soft clothes, were warm and innocent. Their small cries breaking the heart of everyone present. Yemisi kissed each baby on the forehead, her tears falling onto their tiny faces. Adeyemi stood beside her, his own eyes red and full of sorrow. His hands trembled as he reached for one of the babies, his heart aching with a pain he could not describe. He had never felt so powerless, so broken. The chief priest watched them with a stern expression. Hurry, there is no time. He commanded, his voice cold. We must cleanse the land. The river awaits. With hands that shook and a heart that felt like it was being torn apart, Yemisi gently placed her baby into one of the baskets. Her tears fell onto the soft clothes and she whispered, Mama loves you. Mama loves you so much. Ademi took a deep breath trying to steady himself. He bent down and placed their baby girl into the second basket. His hands lingered for a moment, his body shaking with grief. Forgive me, my child, he whispered. Forgive your father. The chief priest and the elders turned and began the slow, sorrowful walk towards the river. Let me see Anadeemi each picked up a basket, carrying their precious children in their arms. Yemisi's sobs filled the air, and Adeemi's heart felt heavy with guilt and sorrow. As they walked through the village, people came out of their homes to watch, their faces full of sadness and disbelief. Women wept openly, and men bowed their heads in sorrow. Children, too young to understand the weight of what was happening, clung to their mothers, their eyes wide with fear and confusion. The chief priest led the way, chanting incantations as they moved. His voice echoed through the village, calling upon the spirits to cleanse the land of the supposed cause. The elders followed closely behind, their heads bowed, their footsteps heavy. Yemisi sobbed uncontrollably, her heart shattering with every step. Ademi walked beside her, his arm around her shoulders, trying to comfort her even as his own tears streamed down his face. It will be all right. He whispered, though he didn't believe his own words. We will get through this. We have to be strong. Let me sit down to him, her face full of pain. How can it ever be all right? She cried. How can we live without them, Ade? They are our children. Ade Yemi could not answer. His heart felt too broken, his words too weak. He pulled her closer, holding on to her as they continued towards the river. Finally, they reached the river bank. 
the water flowed gently, reflecting the midday sun in shimmering ripples. The chief priest raised his staff high, his voice ringing out over the river as he began the final part of the ritual. The elders stood in a solemn circle, their eyes closed, murmuring prayers. Yemisi and Adeyemi knelt by the water's edge. Their hearts shattered all over again. The chief priest turned to them and gestured towards the river. Place the basket in the water, he commanded. The spirit will carry them away and cleanse the land. Yemisi clutched the basket, holding her baby boy. Her whole body shaking. Please, she begged, her voice cracking with grief. Please don't make me do this. They are innocent. The chief priest's expression remained stern. It must be done, he said. We cannot go against the will of our ancestors. Adeyemi placed his hand over Yemisi's, his own tears falling. We have no choice, he whispered, his voice heavy with sorrow. I am so sorry, my love. With one last heart-wrenching sob, Yemisi placed the basket with her baby boy onto the water. The basket floated, bobbing gently with the current. Adeyemi, his hands trembling, placed the basket with their baby girl beside it. The two baskets drifted slowly, carried by the gentle flow of the river. Yemisi collapsed into Adeyemi's arms, her sobs tearing through the air. No, she cried. My babies, my precious babies. Adeyemi held her tightly, his own grief pouring out. I am so sorry, he whispered over and over, his voice breaking. I am so sorry. As the basket drifted away, the chief priest finished his incantations and lowered his staff. The elders turned and began to leave, satisfied that the ritual had been completed. The villagers who had followed stood in silence, some weeping, others praying for peace. Yemisi and Adeyemi stayed by the river bank, holding each other as their hearts shattered into pieces. Mama Ade soon arrived, her face pale with grief. She rushed to them, falling to her knees and wrapping her arms around her son and daughter-in-law. My children, she wept, her voice thick with sorrow. I am so, so sorry. They held onto each other, their tears mingling, their pain too great to bear. The river carried the basket further and further away until they disappeared from sight, swallowed by the distance and the flowing water. The village believed that the cause had been washed away, that their land was now safe from harm. But for Yemisi and Adeyemi, the loss was too great. Their home, once full of hope and dreams, was now silent and empty. The sun shone brightly in the sky, but to them, the world felt dark and cold. That night, as the village celebrated their supposed safety, Yemisi and Adeyemi stayed in their small hut. Their hearts full of grief, they wept, they prayed, and they held each other clinging to the last bit of hope that somehow one day their pain would ease. The next morning, the sun rose gently over the village of Egbe, casting a golden glow over the small hut and winding path. Yemisi woke up with a heavy heart, her mind still clinging to the hope that somehow, somewhere, her twins were safe. She had not seen Selina since the day she had begged her for help. And the unanswered questions weighed heavily on her. With a determined sigh, Yemisi got dressed and made her way to Selina's hut. The little house was quiet and the door remained shut. Yemisi knocked softly, her heart pounding with both hope and fear. Selina, she called, but there was no answer. She waited a moment, listening, but all she had was the rustling of leaves and the calls of morning birds. Yemisi turned away. Her shoulders slumping with disappointment. Every day she had come to check, and every day Selena was not there. But she couldn't give up. She made a silent promise to herself to keep coming back, hoping that one day she would find her friend and learn the fate of her beloved twins. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. Yemis's heart grew heavier with each passing day, but she never stopped checking. The pain of not knowing felt almost as unbearable as the day 
she had placed her babies in those baskets. Yet, deep in her heart, she clung to the small fragile hope that Selena had somehow managed to save them. One sunny afternoon, Yemisi was helping one of the other teachers at the village school with sorting out old books when she heard her name being called. She turned around to see a fellow teacher, B.C., hurrying towards her, holding a piece of paper in her hand. Yemisi, B.C. called out, a bright smile on her face. I have something for you. It's a letter. Yemisi's eyes widened in surprise, and her heart skipped a bit. A letter, she repeated, her voice trembling. She took the letter from B.C., her hands shaking. Who is it from? B.C.'s smile widened. It's from Selena, she said. I was asked to deliver it to you. Here you go. Yemisi clutched the letter to her chest, her eyes filling with tears. Thank you, B.C., she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. She couldn't wait. Another moment, she hurried home. Her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and hope. When she reached her small hut, she closed the door behind her, sat down, and carefully opened the letter. Her hands trembled as she unfolded the paper, and she took a deep breath before she began to read. Dear Yemisi, I hope this letter finds you well. I am writing to share the news you have been waiting for. On the day your twins were taken to the river, my friends and I acted quickly. We managed to rescue them, just as we had planned. Your babies are safe, Yemisi. They are alive and well. We have taken them to the city, where they are being cared for and loved. And I have given them names, Ayomide and Bolade. Ayomide means my joy has come, and Bolade means one who arrives with wealth. I choose these names because your twins are truly blessings, and I know they will bring great joy to your heart. I know it must be hard for you not to see them, to not hold them and watch them grow. But please, know that they are happy and healthy. I promise to care for them as if they were my own. And when they are old enough, I will make sure they know who their wonderful parents are. Be strong, Yemisi. Your babies are safe, and I will keep you updated whenever I can. Remember, you are not alone. They are loved, and they will be fine. With all my love and hope, Selina. Yemisi's tears fell freely as she finished reading. Her heart felt like it was bursting with joy and relief. Her babies were alive. Ayomide and Boladi. Beautiful names for the two little lives she had loved so fiercely. Even though she couldn't see or touch them, just knowing they were safe, filled her with a happiness she hadn't felt in months. Yemisi pressed the letter to her heart and whispered, Thank you, Selina. Thank you for saving my babies. She wiped her tears and stood up, feeling lighter than she had in a long time. She couldn't stop smiling, her heart dancing with joy. All through the day, Yemisi's happiness shone brightly. She hummed softly as she prepared lunch. Her smile wide and full of hope. Her eyes sparkled. And she moved around with an energy that had been missing for so long. Adeyemi, who had been quietly watching his wife, finally approached her, his brow furrowed with curiosity. Yemisi, he said gently, you look so happy today. It has been a long time since I've seen you smile like this. What has happened to bring you such joy? Yemisi's smile widened, and she looked up at her husband. Oh, it's nothing, she said lightly, turning back to her chores. I just feel happy today, that's all. Adeyemi's frown deepened. He knew his wife too well to believe it was nothing. For months, she had been so sad, and her smiles had been rare. Something had changed, and he needed to know what it was. Yemisi, he said. His voice soft but serious. Please now, tell me the truth. What has made you so happy? Hmm? Yemisi paused, her hands stealing over the pot she was staring. She turned to look at Adeyemi, her heart full of love and gratitude. But she couldn't share the secret, not yet. Ade, she said gently. Sometimes, 
happiness comes when we least expect it. Please, just be happy with me today, okay? Ade Amy sighed. His concern is still etched on his face. I am happy to see you smile, he said, stepping closer to her. But I can't help but feel that something has happened. If you're hiding something, please know that you don't have to carry it alone. Yeah, Mrs. Smile softened, and she reached up to touch his cheek. I promise, everything will be all right, she said, her voice full of quiet strength. Trust me, Ade. Ade Amy looked into her eyes, searching for answers he couldn't find. Finally, he nodded, though the worry in his heart didn't completely fade. All right, he said, I trust you. Yemis's heart was full of love for her husband, and she wished she could tell him the truth. But for now, she kept Selena's letter a secret, holding on to the hope it had given her. That night, as the sun set and the stars appeared in the sky, Yemisi sat outside looking up at the heavens. Mama loves you, Ayomide Ambolade, she whispered. Her voice full of love. Stay safe and grow strong. One day, we'll be together again. The stars twinkled above her. And for the first time in a long while, she felt that maybe, just maybe, everything will be all right. Days passed, and the change in Yemisi was clear to everyone who saw her. The sadness that had once clouded her face was gone replaced by a bright smile and a lively spirit. She hummed while she cooked, laughed as she swept the floor, and even joined in conversations with the villagers. Her happiness was so radiant that it seemed to brighten everything around her. Adeyemi noticed the change more than anyone. He loved seeing his wife so full of life, but he couldn't help but wonder what had brought about the sudden joy. One evening, as the sun set and painted the sky with shades of pink and orange, Ademi decided he had to know the truth. He found Yemisi outside tending to the small garden behind their hut. Her hands were busy pulling weeds, but her face was glowing with happiness. Yemisi, Ademi called softly, walking over to her. She looked up, her smile widening at the sight of him. My dear wife, he continued. His voice gentle but serious. I need to ask you something. Yemisi tilted her head, a playful sparkle in her eyes. What is it, Ade? She asked, wiping her hands on her wrapper. Ademi took a deep breath, his eyes searching hers. You have been so happy lately, he said, his voice full of love and curiosity. It warms my heart to see you smile again, but I know there must be a reason. Please tell me the truth. What has brought back your joy? Yemisi's yeah, smile softened and she looked down at her hands. Wish we are still a little dirty from the soil. Her heart raced, but she knew it was time to share the secrets that had given her so much hope. Ade, she said, her voice trembling. There is something I need to tell you. Ade Amy knelt beside her, his hands reaching for hers. I am listening, he said. His voice full of gentle encouragement. Yemisi took a deep breath and then told him everything. She told him about the letter from Selena, about how Selena and her friends had saved the twins from the river that day. She explained that the twins, Ayomide and Bolade, were alive and living in the city, being cared for by Selena. They are safe, my love, Yemisi said, tears streaming down her face. They are healthy and happy, Ade. Our children are alive. Ademi's eyes widened with shock. He sat back on his heels, his mouth opening and closing as he tried to find the right words. Alive? He whispered, his voice full of disbelief. Our twins are alive. Yemisi nodded. Her tears now tears of joy. Yes, my love, she said. Selena has taken care of them all along. She loves them like her own and they are thriving. I think his heart felt like it might burst with a mixture of relief, joy, and gratitude. He put Yemisi into his arms, holding her tightly as tears of his own felled. Oh, Yemisi, he whispered, his voice full of emotion. You are so brave. Thank you for not giving up on them. 
They held each other for a long time, their hearts full of love and hope. When they finally pulled back, Adeyemi took Yemisi's face in his hands. We must keep this a secret, he said gently. We cannot let anyone know, not until the right time. Yemisi nodded, her eyes shining. I know, she said. We must protect them, even from afar. They made a silent promise to each other. A promise to cherish the knowledge that their children were alive and to keep that secret safe. They prayed together, asking God to watch over Ayamide and Boladi and give them the strength to wait until the day they could be reunited. As the years passed, Selina cared for the twins as if they were her own children. Selina, an African-American woman who had come to Egbe years ago to teach and take the responsibility of raising Ayomide and Balade with great love and dedication. She made sure they had everything they needed and gave them a life full of opportunities. She even traveled with them to different cities, showing them a world beyond Egbe and giving them the best education she could. Ayomide and Balade grew up strong, smart and full of life. Selina often took them on trips to museums, parks and cultural events. She showered them with love and told them stories of courage and strength. Though she never revealed the truth about where they came from or who their real parents were, to Ayomide and Bolade, Selina was their mother and they loved her so much. Years later, the twins graduated from prestigious universities abroad and Selina was filled with pride. They had become wonderful young adults, full of kindness and wisdom. Even though Selina had given them a beautiful life, she never forgot about Yemisi and Adeyemi. She continued to write letters to Yemisi, sharing stories of the twins' growth and accomplishment. Every time a letter arrived, Yemisi's heart would race with excitement. She would sit beside Adeyemi, and together they would read the words that painted pictures of the life their children were living. They are so smart, Adeyemi. Yemisi would say, her eyes brimming with tears. Ayomide has such a kind heart. Ambolade is brave and strong. I am so proud of them. Adeyemi would hold her hand and smile, his heart swelling with love and longing. One day, he would say, we'll see them again, I believe it. Mama Ade, now very old and frail, often watched Yemisi and Adeyemi with a look of curiosity. She had noticed how much happier they seemed, even though they had never had any more children after the twins. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and painted the sky with golden hues, Mama Ade sat with Yemisi and Adeyemi outside their hut. My children, Mama Ade said softly, her voice quivering with age. There is something I have wanted to ask you for a long time. I see the love in your eyes, the hope that never fades. What is it that gives you this strength? Yemisi and Adeyemi exchanged a look, their hearts pounding. They had kept the secret for so long, but they knew Mamadi deserved to know the truth. Yemisi took her mother-in-law's frail hands in hers and said, Mama, there is something we have never told anyone. It is a secret we have held in our heart for years. Mamadi's eyes widened, and she leaned forward. Listening intently, Yemisi took a deep breath and told her everything. The story of the twins, the rescue by Selina, and the letters that kept them connected. As Yemisi spoke, tears streamed down Mama Ade's face, but there were tears of joy and relief. My grandchildren, Mama Ade whispered, her voice trembling, they are alive. Oh, thank God, thank God. She hugged Yemisi and Adeyemi tightly her old hands trembling with happiness. I have waited so long to know this. You have given me hope, my dear children. I pray that I will live to see them one day. Yemisi and Adeyemi held her close, their heart full of love and gratitude. We will all wait together, Mama. Adeyemi said softly, one day we will be reunited as a family. Life continued in the village of Egbe, and though... The years passed slowly. The hope in Yemisi and Adeyemi's hearts never faded. They cherished the letters from Selina, 
each one a reminder that their children were alive and thriving. And every day, they prayed that the day would come when Ayomide and Bolade would finally come home. The years had passed and Ayomide and Bolade had grown into strong, intelligent young adults. They had both studied medicine, driven by a passion to help others and make the world a better place. Their hard work and dedication had paid off. They were now respected doctors, saving lives every day. Selina, who had raised them with so much love, was incredibly proud of the people they had become. One morning, Selina sat down with Ayomide and Bolade in their living room. Her face looked worried, and the twins noticed right away. Ayomide put down the medical journal he had been reading and leaned forward. Mommy, he said gently, for that was what they always called her. What's wrong? You look troubled. Selina sighed. Her eyes full of concern. I received some news from Ebe, she said. An unknown illness has spread through the village. People are dying and the illness shows no mercy. Bolade's eyes widened with worry. How terrible. Is there any way we can help? Selina's face softened with love and pride for the twins she had raised. Yes, she said. That's why I'm telling you this. It is time for you to travel to Egbe and use your skills to help the people there. They need you. The twins exchanged a glance, a silent conversation passing between them. Ayamide nodded, determination in his eyes. We'll go, he said firmly. We can't let people suffer if there is something we can do to help. Balade placed a gentle hand on Selena's. We will make you proud, mommy, she promised. We'll save as many lives as we can. Selena's eyes filled with tears of gratitude. You have always made me proud, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. I know you will do great things. Together, with a team of medical friends, Ayomide and Bolade prepared for the journey to Egbe. The road was long and dusty, winding through thick forests and open plains. But the twins were determined. They traveled for days, their hearts filled with a sense of purpose. Finally, they arrived at the village where the air was heavy with fear and sadness. The illness had spread quickly, and many villagers were weak and suffering. Ayomide and Bolade wasted no time. They set up a small clinic, distributing medicine and organizing treatment plans. Their friends, also doctors, worked tirelessly alongside them, bringing hope to a place that had almost lost it. One afternoon, Ayomide was examining a sick child when an elderly man approached him. The man's eyes were filled with gratitude. Doctor, he said, his voice trembling, thank you for coming to help us. We had lost hope, but you and your sister have brought light to our village. Ayamide smiled, his heart full of warmth. It is our duty to help, he said gently. We'll do everything we can to make sure everyone gets better. Bolade was just as busy, moving from one patient to another with a kind and gentle touch. The villagers marveled at the twins' dedication and skill, never suspecting the deep connection they had to this land. After weeks of hard work, the village began to recover. The illness that had once seemed unstoppable was now under control, and people started to heal. The villagers celebrated, praising the doctors who had saved their lives. One evening, as the sun was setting, Selina called Ayomide and Bolade aside. Her eyes sparkled with a secret she had kept for so many years. There is someone you both need to meet, she said, a mysterious smile on her face. Someone very important. The twins exchanged puzzled glances or trusted Selina completely. They followed her as she led them through the village to a house built of concrete and topped with a roof of shining zinc. The house stood strong and proud a symbol of the love and hard work that had built it. Inside, Nemesis was sweeping the floor when she heard footsteps approaching. She looked up and her heart stopped. She dropped the broom, her hands flying to her mouth. Standing in the doorway, there are two young adults who look just like her and Adeim. Ayomide had his father's strong features and Bolade had her mother's bright eyes. Nemesis' heart knew immediately. Tears filled her eyes and she ran forward, her arms outstretched. My children, she whispered, her voice trembling with emotion. My beautiful children. 
Ayomide and Bola, they stood frozen for a moment, but then they were wrapped in their mother's warm embrace. Yemisi held them close, her tears falling onto their shoulders. You are here, she sobbed. You are really here. Bolade's eyes filled with tears as she hugged Yemisi back. She was surprised that this woman called them her children. Then she looked at her mother, Selina. Selina stood nearby, her own eyes shining with happiness. She nodded softly. This is your mother, Yemisi, and there is someone else you need to meet. At that moment, Adeyemi stepped out from the back of the house, his face a mixture of shock and joy. His heart felt like it had stopped, and he struggled to find his voice. Ayomide, Bolade, he whispered, his hands trembling. The twins turned to see their father standing there, tears streaming down his face. Ayomide took a step forward, his throat tight with emotion. Father, he said, his voice cracking. Adeyemi rushed forward, pulling his children into his arms. He hugged them tightly, his body shaking with sobs. My children, he whispered, his voice breaking. My precious children, you have come back to us. They stood there, wrapped in each other's arms. As years of pain and longing melted away, Selina wiped tears from her eyes, her heart full of joy at seeing Yemisi and Adeyemi so happy. The reunion was a moment she had dreamed of for so long. They all sat down and Selina cleared her throat, her voice gentle and full of love. Ayomide, Bolade, she said, there is a story you need to hear. It is the story of how you came into this world and the sacrifices your parents made to keep you safe. Ayomide and Bolade listened in stunned silence as Selina told them everything. She spoke of the tradition that had threatened their lives. The brave decision Yemisi and Adeyemi had made, and the journey she had taken to protect them. By the time she finished, tears were streaming down the twins' faces. Olade turned to Yemisi and Adeyemi, her voice full of gratitude. You did all that to save us, she whispered. You risked everything. Yemisi took her daughter's hands in hers, her eyes full of love. We love you from the moment we are born, she said, her voice shaking. We would have done anything to keep you safe, even if it meant letting you go. Ayomide reached for his father's hand, his own heart full of joy and gratitude. Thank you, he said, his voice thick with emotion. Thank you for loving us so much. They hugged again, their family finally whole. Selena watched with a smile, her heart full of fulfillment. Yemisi turned to her, her eyes brimming with gratitude. Selena. She said, we owe you everything. Thank you for saving our children. Thank you for loving them when we couldn't. Selena's smile was warm and gentle. It was an honor, she said. They have always been my joy, and I am so proud of the people they have become. That afternoon, Yemisi and Adeyemi took Ayomide and Bolade to see Mamadi. The old woman was lying on her bed, her eyes tired but full of love. When she saw the twins, her eyes filled with tears. My grandchildren, she whispered, her voice full of wonder. I have waited so long for this moment. Ayomide and Bolade knelt beside her, holding her hands gently. We are here, Grandma, Ayomide said softly. We are finally here. Mama Ade smiled, her heart full and at peace. She closed her eyes, a look of pure happiness on her face. Thank you, she whispered. I can rest now. And with that, she slipped away peacefully, her wish finally granted. The twins wept for the grandmother they had just met, but they also felt a deep sense of love and connection. They had found their roots, and their family was finally whole. Yemisi and Adeyemi held each other close, their hearts full of love, gratitude, and hope for the future. Selina, standing nearby, felt fulfilled. She had completed her mission. And the love that surrounded her filled her heart with joy. Yemisi couldn't stop thanking her. And they all knew that this reunion was just the beginning of a new beautiful chapter in their lives. Rumors spread quickly through the village of Egbe, as they often do in a place where everyone knows everyone. Whispers about the return of the forbidden twins buzzed in every corner. From the village market to the river banks, 
where women washed clothes. People gathered in small groups, sharing the unbelievable news. The very children who had once been cast away, believed to be a cause, had returned as heroes, saving the village from the terrible illness. The elders who had once demanded the twins to be thrown into the river were dumbfounded. They could not believe that the same children they had banished were now respected doctors who had saved so many lives. Shame and regret filled their heart. And they decided to do something they had never imagined doing. They would apologize. One afternoon, the elders gathered at Adeyemi Ayemisi's humble home. The chief elder, a tall man with a long white beard, stepped forward. His face was solemn and he held his walking stick tightly, as if it were the only thing keeping him steady. A crowd of villagers followed, their faces filled with curiosity and hope. Ademi and Yemisi stood at the door of their home, their children, Ayemide and Bolade, standing proudly beside them. Selina was there too, her heart full of love and pride for the family she had come to cherish. The chief elder cleared his throat, his voice heavy with emotion. Ademi and Yemisi, he began, bowing his head. We have come to say that we are deeply sorry. We made a terrible mistake. We are blinded by tradition and fear. We cast away your children, believing them to be a cause. But today, we see that they are blessings. They have saved all of us. The other elders bowed their heads in shame. Please, the chief elder continued, forgive us. We have learned our lesson. And we promise that this cruel tradition has been abolished. From now on, every child would be celebrated, for every child is special. Yemisi's eyes filled with tears, and she clutched at Yemi's hand. Ayamide and Bolade looked at each other, then at their parents before stepping forward. Ayamide spoke first, his voice strong but gentle. We are not here to hold grudges, he said. We are here to help and to heal. What happened in the past cannot be changed, but we can choose to move forward with love and forgiveness. Bolade nodded, her eyes warm and kind. Everything happens for a reason, she added. We have no anger in our heart. We forgive you, and we hope that you have learned to see the value in every life. The villagers murmured in shock at the wisdom of the young doctors. Selina stepped forward, her voice full of compassion. I want to take this moment to educate you all, she said. Every child, no matter the circumstances of their birth, is a gift. We must cherish our children and give them a chance to grow and thrive. Fear should never make us turn away from love. The villagers listened with open heart, nodding and wiping away tears. Adeyemi and Yemisi stepped forward as well. Their hands clasped together. We have also learned to forgive, Adeyemi said. His voice steady. We understand that you acted out of fear, but now we are all wiser. Let us work together to make Egbe a place where love and kindness rule. The crowd erupted into cheers, and there was a sense of relief and joy that swept over everyone. It was a bittersweet moment, filled with both sorrow for the past and hope for the future. The village had come together stronger than ever. A grand celebration was held on the village square. The drums beat loudly, and the air was filled with the smell of delicious food. People danced laughed and hugged one another the welcome back ceremony was a sight to behold and the twins were honored for their bravery and kindness as the celebration continued ayamide and Bolade knew that they wanted to give back to the village that had once rejected them they had made a promise to take care of their parents and that was exactly what they planned to do we'll make sure you are never in need again ayamide said to adeyemi and yebisi you have sacrificed so much for us, Bolade added. We want to give back to Egbe so that no one will ever have to suffer the way we did. With the wealth and knowledge they had gained, the twins set out to transform the village. They took their parents to the city, ensuring that Adeyemi and Yemisi received the best medical care and the comfort they deserved. They also built a beautiful spacious house in Egbe for their family complete with everything their parents could ever need. But their work didn't stop there. 
Ayomide and Bola, they funded the construction of a big modern hospital in Egbe, where villagers could receive free medical treatment. The hospital was equipped with the latest technology and staffed with skilled doctors who were committed to helping anyone, no matter how poor or wealthy. They rebuilt the village school, turning it into a place of learning that any child would be proud to attend. The school had new classrooms, a library full of books, and a playground where children could laugh and play. They also built a civic center for community events and a marketplace that was clean and organized. Roads were paved, making travel easier. And soon, Egbe became a place that everyone talked about. Selina, who has started this journey with love and courage, watched with a full heart as the village transformed. Yemisi never stopped thanking her tears of gratitude in her eyes. Selina, she said one day, holding her hands, you gave us our children back. We can never thank you enough. Selina smiled, her heart full. It was my honor, she said. And look at all the good that has come from it. Egbe is now a place of hope and love. Adeyemi, Yemisi, Ayomide Bolade and Selina lived happily, surrounded by the love of the village and the joy of having their family whole once more. One night, as Yemisi lay in bed, she drifted into a peaceful sleep. In her dream, she found herself walking through a field of white flowers. There, standing under a great tree, was the old man she had once met so many years ago. He didn't say a word this time. He simply smiled at her, his eyes full of kindness and warmth. Yemisi felt a wave of peace wash over her, and she knew that everything had happened as it was meant to. When she woke, her heart was light, and she smiled, knowing that the journey had come full circle. Egbe was no longer a place of fear and old traditions. It was a village of love, growth, and forgiveness. And in that love, the family that had once been broken was now whole, stronger than ever, and ready to embrace the beautiful future that awaited them. The lesson from this story is that every child is special and a gift from God, no matter what people may say or believe. Love, courage, and kindness can help us overcome even the hardest challenges. Forgiveness is important too. The villagers learned that old traditions that bring pain should be left behind. And we should always protect and love those who are innocent. The story also teaches us that even when things seem very hard or sad, hope and love can bring happiness and make things better. Thank you so much for watching this amazing story about Yemisi and Adeyemi on African Stories. If you liked it and felt inspired with your journey, please show your support by clicking the like button sharing with your friends and leaving a comment below. To see more interesting stories and learn about different cultures, subscribe to African Stories by V. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss a new story. Your support means a lot and helps us bring more stories to you. Until we meet again, stay connected, stay inspired, and keep smiling.